Distances between parents and their children can be an obstacle to effective parenting. With reference to Leslie Neka Arima's story, Light, write an essay in support of this statement. Distance between parents and their children can be an obstacle to effective parenting. With reference to Nestle, Neka Arima's story, that is the light, write an essay in support of this statement. Good learners, welcome, welcome, welcome again, even if you're doing these particular final touches in preparation for this particular November exams. And of course, we're giving a prediction. This is the memories we lost and other stories. And this is from the light, Leslie Neka Zarima. Now, we are responding to this particular prompt here. You are asked to write a composition, a development, or a, an essay on this particular prompt up there. With reference to this particular text here, write an essay in support of the statement that distances between parents and the children can be an obstacle to effective parenting. An intro up there. Parents may find themselves separated from their children because of work or study. The distance normally hinders effective parenting because it reduces communication between parent and a child. Light by Leslie Nekarima brings to light the effects of this separation. The first challenge the girl experiences is a boy-girl relationship. Three years after her mother went to America to study for a master's in business administration, the girl is now 14. Her father has been invited to school since the girl is in trouble for sending a boy a note and it is not for the first time. In Annabelle's eyes, the boy is not appealing. He is short and one of his ears is significantly larger than the other. He also sports a terrible haircut. He is saved from Annabelle only because, like everybody else, he is confused about the girl's attention. This particular note reads, and I quote, Buki, I love you. I'll give you many sons. Annabelle struggles not to guffle, but wonders where the girl gets all these. Definitely not from her mother or him. Assuring her, the head teacher that it will not happen again, he promises to justize her. It happens two more times before the girl learns to pass notes better. Annabelle deems his daughter his brightest ember and will not deem her. Her mother attempts to correct her, but much is lost in transmission over the wire. Her influence as a mother has been diluted because of the long absence and distance. She disagrees with Annabelle concerning the training up of the girl. Later, trying to close the distance between her mother and her, she tells him about the boy, stringing out his verges like Christmas lights. He is shorter, so he has to obey her, and he is finally learning how to kiss better. The mother is disappointed. She says she did not think she would raise that kind of a girl. Secondly, when Annabelle's wife goes to the U.S. and stays for a few years, there is a serious strain in communication between her daughter and her. The first month she had gone to the States, the family would speak to each other several times a day. The mother and daughter would have their cordial time full of tears and I miss yous and affectionate questions like, when are you coming home? When she returns for Christmas holidays, the girl barely leaves her side. However, the parents make their first big mistake when they decide that the mother stays in the U.S. until she completes her studies. The girl then learns how to survive without her mother. For one, for one relationship to thrive, another must not. The conversations between mother and daughter via Skype dwindle. They become merely friendly conversations where they exchange news and updates each other on situations. There is a whiff of distance as if the girl is talking to a favorite aunt whom she loves clearly but would not tell about her boy. The distance causes difficulty in communication between the mother and 
daughter. Thirdly, the mother's attempt to prepare the girl for the world causes a resentment between them instead. As much as she is still a girl, she's almost a woman who needs a mother's guidance and counsel. The mother tries to teach her not to laugh too loudly or to chew carelessly that she can hear it all the way in America. She also tells her that she's old enough to be cooking and that daddy should not make her breakfast. The distance between the two widens until she does not enjoy talking to the mother anymore. It begins to feel like a like a, co a chore rather since the mother is far she faces hurdles in giving her daughter the necessary life lessons vital for the growth and development of a teenage girl also the mother is worried about the house girl whom she thinks will influence her daughter negatively despite having a house girl father and daughter share household chores they are too intimidated by the sullen house girl who spends most of the time watching African magic, while mopping a small section of tile till it gleams. He muses that talk is just talk when he tells his wife about this. The wife is terrified that the daughter could acquire inappropriate traits from the house girl. She nags until Annabelle sends her packing. The daughter becomes silent after this. She waits with crossed arms for the Skype calls to end. This strained relationship is caused by the distance between them. Due to her mother's absence, the girl misses important life lessons necessary for a teenage girl. Such lessons are better taught by mothers. Annabelle does not understand what the world does to daughters. Annabelle and his daughter survive much in the absence of the mother, who is in America studying for a master's in business administration. The girl is only 11. They survive the disturbance at the market when two warring women cause a commotion that seems them separated for hours. They also survive an adult who talk when an angle makes a careless joke at a wedding. The curious girl has questions so Annabelle labors to answer lest she asks somebody else who may take it an, an invitation to demonstrate. The mother would have been better placed to handle this trivial trial. They also survived the crime scene of a girl's first moon time. It seeps all the way through the other side of the mattress. They survived the girl discovering it would happen every month. Had the mother been around, she would have talk, take, uh, uh, taken her through the relevant lessons and prepared her for the changes. Distance hinders effectual parenting. Furthermore, because of her mother's absence, the girl fails to learn basic grooming and etiquette. The mother cautions her against chewing carelessly and laughing, rather too loudly. She becomes nitpicky, struggling to ease her daughter's passage. She is concerned about what the girl is wearing. She advises her to sit with her legs uh, crossed at the angle. She also wonders when the girl last had a relaxer as her hair is scattered, scattered rather. Annabelle panics when the wife suggests that she would call her sister. The sister is a terrifying, com competent woman with three polished boys and the money to take another child. In his, in his fit of panic, Annabelle buys cream to attempt and fix the girl's hair. He massages it into her scalp like lotion and the smell makes both their eyes water. When he washes it out, half of her hair comes out. When the mother's sister comes, she silently notices that the over the overprocessed mess and the scar forming on the girl's forehead. When she brings her back, her hair is shorn and cut close to the scalp. She turns her head, preening. The mother admits that she has a lovely shaped scalp but ruins everything when she adds that she can't wait for the hair to grow back so that she looks like a proper girl again. This causes another fight between her and Annabelle. They feel like strangers. The distance contributes to this particular kind of fallout. Lastly, the girl is forced to take sides when the parent fight. When she comes back from her aunties, everyone, including the mother, agree that her skull has quite the lovely shape. However, 
the mother wins it when she says that she can't wait for the heir to grow back so that she can look like a proper girl again. This starts another argument between the parents. The milled fight papers with time. Distance subtracts warmth, context, and history. Husband and wife feel like they are arguing with a stranger. The girl stops talking to her mother, and that is after that remark. Naturally, the mother pleads with Annabelle to, to, uh, to soften her. He agrees but does not comply. He enjoys when the girl is angry at her mother and when she is on his side. As much as the girl does not hold grudges, the distance between her and the mother widens and is now akin to something curious. Arima, the author of this particular narrative, refers to it as an elephant of mistress and awkwardness. In conclusion, the tension between mother and daughter is as a result of the distance between them. A child needs both parents in order to grow properly. A teenager girl needs a mother to guide her. Otherwise, she battles a myriad of challenges. Uh, good students, quickly, this again marks the end of this particular episode. I just want to say whatever that I usually say, that in case you're coming across this work and it's your first time, a thumbs up will do me good, a subscription, and of course a sharing with good friends out there that you know that they are faced maybe with this one this coming November exams. And above all, I wish you the very best. Cheers for now.